Good evening, I'd like to call this meeting to order. This is Independent School District 832, the Matamidi School District. This is a regular board meeting on Thursday, November 16th, 2023 at seven o'clock p.m. Uh, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, the Republic, our nation, Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Roll call of attendance. Done. People of the agenda, do I have a motion? So moved. By Director Doman. Second. Seconded by Director Donna. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Carries. Uh, approval of the consent agenda. Director Regan. Second. Second by Director Peterson. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Presentations and recognition. Start with the Zephyr Showcase. So before we our meeting, we had a Zephyr Showcase this evening. Um, Zephyr Showcase is our opportunity for students and staff members throughout the district to come in and and show some of the things that are going on in our schools and then for the school board and other community members to be able to ask questions and interact with those students about their projects or whatever it is they're working on. So this is our opportunity since people at home didn't get to interact with everybody before the uh, meeting. This is our opportunity for the board to be able to comment on some of the things they heard or learned or saw tonight. So Thank you. Director Peterson. Okay. I'll start it off with two I'd like to highlight. One is the care closet. I just thought going back to high school, how nice to be able to pop in and grab something you need quick. Um, and then I'm I'm thinking with that, they'll be able to adjust for supply and demand. If, you know, 20 kids are asking for something they don't have, that'll start showing up. And if it's stocked with something they never need, you know, I, I just think that'll be a great way to get a pulse on what high schoolers forget at home or need during the day they didn't think of. And then the other one is still up. It's the work-based. I had no idea there was um, a program for those kids before passages. I thought it just started at passages. I had no idea during the day they were doing work-based learning and some practical life skills. And then what a feeder into passages, she said most end up staying in and, and continuing learning work and life skills. Um, I just wanted to kind of add on to the care closets and um, not only did I get to hear about this um, being funded by MAFE, so in our earlier meetings this year, um, uh, MAFE contributing to that and making that possible, but then also really what an amazing effort this is by so many people involved. Um, I asked, is that enough for the May funding? And they said, we also have an Amazon wish list, and parents have been donating to that and teachers have been donating. And um, and also the passages students are helping sort and organize and shop and learning about budgeting. Um, and it in this, and I asked about then, you know, is this being utilized at all four of our schools? And they said yes, and in many different ways. And um, you know, everything from winter clothing to snacks and things like that. So just what a fantastic project and idea and how many different people are helping support that. So thanks to all that are doing that. I just think it's amazing, wonderful. And if anyone's watching the meeting tonight, the Amazon wish list, I guess, is up. They're always looking for more donations. So that was that was really one that I wanted to highlight, but all of them were amazing. Atma. I'm going to highlight the inclusive signing table. First off, I want to say it was very inspiring to see how passionately these students talked about their projects and how they carefully crafted these posters. There was a middle schooler, an elementary schooler, and a high schooler, and they all, like you could tell, they put in a lot of thought to what they wanted to include on the poster. And I think this is a great initiative. It's a small and, I guess, subtle change, but it's a very necessary and impactful one because not only does it show our students that they are welcomed in our district, which will help them be more excited to go to school, but because a lot of our facilities are used by outside communities and other districts, it shows to them what we value as a district. 
Director Payne. So I was very pleased with the theme of the night in terms of how it aligns so nicely with our strategic plan and thinking about how the posters really touched on belonging. But if you think about the music and the guitars, that, that's a way for students to belong. Oftentimes kids um, will have sports and other activities they belong to, but to have a nice variety of things. So to showcase music is a place where many kids find where they belong in our community. Um, the care closets and reaching out to your community to make sure everyone belongs and has their needs met. Um, the folks in the care closet too, I think did a really nice job explaining how they um, have a variety of things for students and how approaching the care closet and asking for snacks is a nice entry point into that and then becoming comfortable and building relationships and belonging and being able to then get additional resources. And then all of this back here with the work-based learning piece is, again, people finding where they belong in the community, in the workplace. And so it was a really nice alignment and a great opportunity for us and our community to see how important the belonging piece of our strategic plan is to us. So I was really impressed with what we're able to see outside of the classroom, but brought into us in the evening. So thank you for arranging that. Well, I feel like they were all covered, so I won't repeat any of it, but I, I have to just add, I do love every time we get the opportunity to talk to our students. Uh, they're just, I'm always impressed. So that that's always a highlight for me. And again, all the programs that were represented here tonight were, I was really, really thankful that we got the opportunity to learn more. So thank you for making it happen. Okay, OH Anderson staff recognition. Good evening, Board of Education, Superintendent Duffer, and the Red Eye Committee, our community. I'm so honored tonight to get to honor one of the best that we have at OH Anderson and in our district. And he was a part of our Zephyr Showcase before. Um, our students were showing why he is an important part of who we are as Zephyrs. So tonight I'm going to honor Rob Pontius, our music teacher at OH Anderson. And we have a lot of input from the OH Anderson community to honor him. Um, so some of you might know Mr. Pontius has worked um, in education for 35 years. He's been in Matamidi for 29 of those years, and he has worked at every one of our schools. So if you look at every level, he knows what it's like from elementary all the way to high school here in Matamidi. And he has influenced that, our music program, and the great uh, musicians that we have in our district. He's been at O.H. Anderson for six years, and I've had the opportunity to work with him. And he's been a leader, not only in the music department, but just in our school um, as a whole, um, really bringing a part um, to our staff. Um, how do we uh, bring restorative practices? How do we work together as strong PLCs? And one of the best things I know is when we hit COVID, Rob helped and he jumped right in and he started helping um, and give classes on how to use Google Meet, how to use Google Classroom, brainstorming and jumping in. And he was a teacher along with others to really support that switch to online teaching during COVID. So there's so many ways that he has supported our district and I'm just gonna share a few of them as well. I think Lucy had spoken about our strategic plan. And when I think of Rob, he is our strategic plan. He helps our kids really find their passions and pursue their passions. He teaches real world skills every single day in music class. Um, students will say he values and respects every individual that comes in. And when you walk in his classroom, you'll see innovative teaching um, strategies. You'll see kids actively involved dancing, singing, composing on the computer, and playing instruments like you saw tonight um, with the guitar. Um, the best thing is if I'm not having a great day, I go in the music class because it's joyful. Kids are happy and they're um, enjoying and experimenting. And he really is living that strategic plan every day with our kids. And this is just a look into our music class. Um, he shares his passions. You'll see on the top, um, they have a musician of the week. Kids can talk about all the musicians and uh, songs they play and give some history of it. That's one of the highlights. Um, kids are singing, dancing, and playing instruments. They're composing their own music and there's a musician of the week. And there's a video on the bottom. If you ever come to OH Anderson in the spring, you'll see them playing their drums outside. So we'll watch that. And they're pretty good. <laughs> they're really good. And <laughs> yes, um, and they have different boots, but it does bring just joy um, walking into that music class. Now, one of the things the kids love is to really showcase their learning. 
And at OH Anderson, we don't have um, separate programs um, that are just like made up programs. We are really showing what they do in music class. So it truly is a showcase of learning. And so at the end of the year, in the spring of each year, all of the kids come up and really showcase the different um, skills that they've learned. And I'll just show you just a short clip of one of our um, showcase of learning. Uh, day, our fifth graders led our school in that song as well, so it was fun. Um, Mr. Pontius not only does music for grades three, four, five, he also leads a fourth grade and fifth grade choir and an, ens an ensemble before school. So kids that are interested in pr pursuing their passions with singing or instruments, they have that opportunity as well at OH Anderson. So there's a little peek into the choir. <laughs> And the highlight is at the end of the year, they get to sing the national anthem at the Twins game. So this is last year at the Twins game. Singing our national anthem today, we welcome students from O.H. Anderson Elementary School in Matamidi. What I appreciate is Mr. Pontius, he looks for real audiences that kids can share and um, bringing it out to the community. Um, I spoke a little bit about some of his leadership that he has done. He is a specialist PLC leader. He is part of the mentor and new teacher support team. So he has worked um, with Ms. Reichel and a team really looking at how do we mentor new teachers to support them in uh, becoming a part of the Matamidi School District. He's part of our district facilities teams. He's been part of our restorative practice team, MCOMP coordinator, and a lot of leadership roles in our district. Now, I asked kids um, to say a few things about Mr. Pontius, and they kept, more kids wanted to say a lot of things. So here's some quotes, but I just think a few of them I, I wanna highlight. Um, uh, Cecilia said, he always includes everyone in class. Um, and uh, one of the students said, he's friendly, kind, and explains things really well as a teacher. And I think the other piece is, um, Jay said on the corner, he is nice and kind, and I like to earn the belts on the recorders. So he has challenges, so they earn kind of like uh, belts like in karate for their recorders. Um, he's really nice, funny, and gets straight to the point. I, I liked that one. And then, um, as he said, he cares about what he's doing. He cares about everyone, is focused, is fun, and he makes music a happy and welcoming place. And that's what we want for our kiddos. So I couldn't say it better than our kids. Um, I have some quotes in there ab about what I said. Uh, Mr. Pontius um, um, is well thought of from his colleagues. Um, Mr. Um, Halston, our art teacher, just really talked about his leadership with that specialist team. And he's leading that team, actually learning about the science of reading course and how that fits in with specialists as well. And Julie Consenius really talks about how grateful she is and honored to call him a colleague and a friend because he really supports that music department K-12 in our district. And families have a lot to say about Mr. Pontius, and he knows this is my favorite story. Um, during COVID, there was a, a parent that she could not miss music class because she loved Mr. Pontius's music class. And she like wanted to start coming when we were in person to see Mr. Pontius's music class because it was so engaging. Um, but parents just really talk about, he has brought that passion out in our kids and our kids are um, loving music. So on behalf of OH Anderson and our district, I want to thank Mr. Pontius for all of his contributions to OH Anderson and to the entire Monmouth High School District. So here's an award for you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, we want to also say thank you. And before we take a photo, I think we want to, if anyone wants to offer comments, but I'll go first. Um, obviously, my boys also had the privilege of having you as their teacher. And I want to point out that the faculty provide the concert and you, and you also have a lot of talent that you share um, during that program. So that's also something I think worth highlighting in addition to all the other things that um, Ms. Prather already shared. So thank you so much. We're very grateful to have you in the district. Director Demers. 
So it's kind of funny for me to refer to you as Rob because I was one of your students <laughs> in the same year. Um, <laughs> but it's really fun to watch it come full circle because my daughter has had you for three years now. And, um, you know, I could echo everything that was said, but one of the best parts about it, like she loves choir, the twins experience was incredible. Um, but the musician of the week thing, having something to come home and have your children like truly interested and passionate to want to talk about the dinner table because otherwise it's how was school today good yeah. you know but every week we have that and it's like it's a really fun discussion for our family so we appreciate it so thank you so much so i don't know where to start because uh, rob and i have known each other for a very long time and um our oldest you know our, well my oldest kid your second right um they went to kindergarten together, I think. Preschool. We did preschool. two so, or three yeah, years of preschool together. So it's been a long time. And uh, I can tell you, not only as just a human being, Rob is someone who is just an amazing person. Um, you can just tell how much he loves what he's doing. You can just see it in his face right now. You can see the joy. Um, th that's just what I've known for so long. And it, to me, it always felt like when my kids went, you know, through your class, it was a safe place. It was a place that they were welcome. It was a safe th place that they belonged. It was a place that even if you're not musical, he was going to make it fun for you. And, you know, and so I, I just appreciate the thousands of students that have gone through your classroom over the years, all that you've given of, of not only teaching them about music, but when I look at all of the other things you've had a hand in too, it's been so many things. And We've talked technology plenty of times over the years. We've talked music. We've a lot of different things. So um, thank you so much for everything that you do for the district, for all the families and students. And uh, one last quick thing. When our sons were in, I think, kindergarten together, they said that they were going to someday live together and figure out how to do this. So that's like that's the connection. Like the, the immediately when I met Rob, I just knew that he was someone that was just like a kind soul. He just exudes kindness. So thank you. Weren't they going to live together under the water? I think that's the thing. It was Imagine so far. <laughs> so Rob, we first met because of the multiple positions we've had in the district. You were in a leadership role at the time. My, my own kids never had the opportunity to have you for music, um, which is a real disappointment on that piece. But in your leadership role, you always took the time to get to know individuals and you have a very strong personalized student-centered learning perspective as you work with students, which helps them feel like they belong, lets them be heard and seen. And that was very important to my children when they interacted with you, that they felt special because of the time you took to be in tune with them and do things for them and not for the group and not for, but you looked at each person as an individual and did what needs to be done for that student in that moment. And that's very special. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh, I feel like I'm signing a college letter. Or <laughs> This turned out pretty good, I think. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Brad.
All right, next on the agenda is May Fall Fun Drive. We have Mara Winky. Hello, welcome. Hi. Hi. For those of you who I haven't met, my name is Mara Winky. I'm a parent in the district here. I have an eighth grade son and a 10th grade daughter. And I'm also on the board of MAFE. I'm a chair of the development committee. So I just want to say happy fall fun drive and uh, also happy give to the max day, which is the day when all of your inboxes are filling up with requests from worthy nonprofits to make a gift. And so it's a perfect night for me to come talk a little bit about our fun drive and how you can support this special opportunity to really support our school district directly. So I have a presentation to take you through a little bit about MAFE. Maybe I'm driving. Okay, why don't you do it? Thank you. Um, so if, for those of you who are not super familiar with MAFE, I think most of, the, of you are, but um, maybe the people that are watching at home aren't. Um, MAFE supports uh, Matamidi Public Schools. We are the Area Education Foundation. And we do it in a number of different ways. We give out classroom grants for teachers uh, to provide them with uh, equipment and tools um, and technology in their classrooms. Um, we give out uh, grants for student enrichment and staff recognition, um, all kinds of district initiatives. Last year, we gave out books for literacy. Um, and then we also support basic necessities for families in our district that need some help. Our classroom grants, some examples of that are STEM kits for early childhood classrooms. Really, we're involved in every single school here in the district um, in different ways. Um, we did the interactive learning playgrounds at Wildwood and OH Anderson, um, the mental wellness program at the middle school, and then some CTE uh, work at the high school. Um, so, you know, it's we, we kind of get into every area depending on need uh, every year. And then, uh, as I mentioned, we uh, have uh, supported a drive to furnish books um, to help with uh, literacy. Uh, last year, we raised $71,000 to support that. And then we do a lot of student enrichment and staff recognition. Um, there's the Welcome Back Breakfast that we fund, 10th anniversary of the Fab Lab, um, the MAPS team, all kinds of cool things. And then finally, we support the Angel Fund. Um, the Angel Fund is a special fund of MAFE uh, that supports the basic human needs and um, uh, of families in the district. So that's everything from back to school supplies, the new care closets you were just discussing. Um, we're supporting that um, gas, grocery, household support. You know, um, when families come and and say that they need a little help, a lot of times uh, the first. Uh, fund that they turn to, um, that the school district turns to is MAFE. And we are here with support and funding to make sure that those supplies are available. So this year we have a fall fund drive um, that has just wrapped up, but it's still underway for you all. Um, our goal is $50,000 and we're already half, uh, more than halfway to our goal. Um, and so I'd really love to have you all as uh, school district representatives consider making a gift to the fall fund drive this year. A hundred percent of the May board has participated with a gift, a uh, personal pledge to the fund drive. Um, and then we've also gone out to the school district and we've asked um, all of your employees to consider a gift as well. And that's been really successful. We have 40 participants right now that have um, made gifts, um, either one-time gifts or through their uh, paycheck deductions. And um, 17 of those are new this year. And so it's it's clearly resonating. Um, so that, that's a real honor. So when you think about a gift that you would like to make to support MAFE, maybe think about your time on the board here um, in leadership and a, a gift that would be representative of, of your position in the district. You're only here for a short time and and um, we our, our need is great. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to take you through what a uh, different level of giving looks like at MAFE. If you give $100, um, that would 
allow us to buy back to school supplies for four students. If you give $150 to MAPE, which is all tax deductible, uh, we'd be able to supply a monthly gas and grocery card for family in need. $250 would be food supplies for a weekend for a student for an entire school year. $500 would sponsor a club like MAPS. And then $1,000 would enable us to regrant a classroom grant for innovation. So your gift in any amount really makes a big impact. So I'd like to take you through how to make a gift. Uh, you each got a handout uh, at the top of the meeting and on that handout is a QR code. All you have to do is scan that with your phone and select board giving. And there's lots of different ways for you to choose how to contribute um, according to those funds. You can choose the angel fund, you can choose area of greatest need. Um, the, the app walks you through it. And you can either make a one-time donation or a recurring donation. And uh, that's all I wanted to talk with you about. If you have any questions, please ask. And I just really want to thank you for taking the time to listen and consider a gift to our fall fund drive. Um, it's once a year and uh, it's the most impactful fundra fundraising that we do for the year. So we'd love to have your support. I, I think the entire board feels um, very appreciative of the MAPE board and all the work that you do. Um, I, th I think we're very fortunate in this district to have such an amazing foundation and group of leaders. So really thank you and please pass that on to the MAPE board, how, how much we appreciate everything um, that, that is accomplished in this district as a partnership with you. Oh, I'd be happy to do so. It's, it's really an honor to serve on that board. I, I get so much more out of it personally than I even put into it. So it's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Education update. Good evening. Um, I'm here, Kate Anderson, the community ed director here in the district. And I wanna give a quick update on um, our annual information from last year. Oh, perfect. Okay. So if you're a veteran school board member, you will have seen this graphic that I've used in the past. It just allows you to see all the different things that community at oversees. Um, tonight, I'm going to be focusing on one area, secondary enrichment in adult and senior programming. But please just quick take a browse around. Um, Adult Basic Ed is a program that we oversee. You don't see much here. Um, we do a, we participate in a consortium with uh, North St. Paul, Maplewood, White Bear Lake. And um, any students that identify in that program do go to Harmony um, in North St. Paul to uh, participate. And some of the other things last year, I think we went over, I went over some facility um, information and we also talked about all the partnerships that we utilize and take advantage of in community ed. Okay, so this is Diana Wright. Some of you have probably seen her out and about in the community. She is a community member here. She's our secondary and adult coordinator. She's been here for a little bit over two years. Um, her experience when she interviewed, she has been in Special Olympics or she oversaw some Special Olympics. She um, had done some senior programming through the YMCA. So we thought she was quite qualified to come here and look at our adult programming. She has two children that attend schools here. One is at the high school and one is at the middle school. And in her free time, she um, enjoys teaching peer bar. And she's actually going to bring that to our community ed program this winter and spring and offer some classes in the evening on Wednesdays. And um, she enjoys watching her children's sports and she leads a very healthy lifestyle. So if you see her in the hallway, say hi. Um, here are some of the programs that or um, things that have been happening in the last year in both of these, just some quick pictures. We have a middle school yoga program that we offer. We have an adult dragon boat. Um, and I heard they might've came in first this year, I think, um, in their race this past summer. And then we have our Lego league um, that we've implemented for a couple of years now. So I wanted to give you some information um, back in school year 1920. So that was right before I 
um, took over here in Manamidai. Uh, if you look, we only had very few programs offered to our middle school and our secondary or our secondary students at the middle school and the high school. Um, and so we really wanted to, in 2021, after um, that little thing that happened that uh, took us a little break of doing things, um, we really wanted to be intentional about looking at what we can do to increase our opportunities for our secondary students. You can see there, those are some of the numbers of the data that we've used on our annual report, which we have to report to the um, state of Minnesota every year. Um, so 21, 22, you know, our high school numbers were a little bit higher in 21, 22. Um, I think part of that is our nine through 12 students are a little bit harder for us to um, outreach for, and that's because there are so many robust programs in our high school with athletics, with our activities and clubs, with our art programs. So it doesn't surprise us, but we did try to um, look at other ways too. We've recently added, I think it was last year, a creative writing class with the Wayfair Center of the Arts. Um, and we're always looking for suggestions. Um, you can also see that our adult programming has increased significantly also. Um, just based on different things that we hear from our community members, what they would want to participate in. Uh, for secondary enrichment, here are some of the things since 2021 school year that we started implementing. You all have heard me talk about over and over Alice Seufert's Middle School Cooking Club that has been such a hit. And of course, our Lego League. I think we've um, hosted one of our coaches in the past to come in. But these are just a few. Our Zephyr Showstoppers, I think our first year that we offered it, we had probably 12 or 13 kids. We now have almost 40. So there's a definite need there and an interest. Uh, this past summer, we listened to the community and thought we could offer a class leading the nest so we could teach some of our students going on after um, high school about finances, health, and cooking. We'll continue to do that. Um, of course, so you want to be a dog trainer. That was a huge hit. Um, Mandala, and then um, an enhancement of our cooking club is uh, Alice started the Zephyr field trips, the cooking club field trips. And um, this was one of the pictures that she took at a local establishment. Um, we visited, I think, three or four different places that day with our students, and they really loved that. And then we also thought that we'd look at, you know, cooking life skills for those young adults as they leave the nest, different things they need to know. Some adult programming that we've started the last couple of years was that um, that could have helped with that increase in numbers is that easy partner dancing. We partner actually with White Bear Lake to do that. Uh, we pulled in a strength and balance class. We've um, really increased our numbers in that. We've had some individuals express how um, that's really helped them after they've had a stroke or if they're just having some equilibrium issues. Um, we are doing some technology classes. So we did a parent's guide to TikTok. And we this is a picture of a group of adults that we took out to the Mill City Museum. And then a very popular thing uh, you might be hearing about is Mahjong. And we have had an uh, instructor come out and teach our seniors some of that. Again, here's some of the numbers. Um, there's an adult and child paint date. We've done that several times. Um, it's interesting because it's not always a child's um, immediate caregiver. We've had some grandparents that have done it in the past with their students. So um, we like to do that intergenerational piece too. That's important. Here's some more pictures, um, that holiday community luncheon. Some of you have participated in that. Um, we have a new instructor doing some painting um, during the day with some of our uh, community members. So these ladies enjoyed a glass painting class. And um, what I wanted to highlight is um, based on the strategic plan and the importance of student agency, um, young students learning about their passions and even the real life experiences, we are doing some career exploration with um, 916. We're also going to look at, we heard um, the student council at the middle school was wanting to do some youth nights. So we are going to partner with them and this winter have 
a youth night where we're going to, a neon night, um, where they can come in and it's a dance and they can have time in the gym and we'll have some food and things like that. And then we're also looking at offering some non-school day service learning trips. Potentially, we're hoping to have a Feed My Starving Children um, event, and then in the afternoon, we're going to try to go sledding and things like that. So getting some more fun time engagement with those students. Some of our adult opportunities, I know I always try to plug this when I have an opportunity. Um, we're having our holiday community lunch. It is on December 4th. Um, that's always a, a fun uh lunchtime. We usually have about 60 adults that come in for that. So that's fun. Foundation for retirement, technology classes, like I said, and some upcoming day trips. Um, we used to do some breakfast trips and take our community bus, but um, after COVID, those kind of went to the wayside, but we did bring back some of these um, longer day trips where more people could um, enjoy it because we, we get a bus. So that's the end of my highlight of our secondary adult enrichment. Do you have any questions? It, um, leaving the nest. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, the first time we offer things, sometimes it's word of mouth afterwards. So I think we had like four or five kids in that. Um, it was a suggestion that we we have a suggestion area that people can submit things to us. And that was something that we've heard over and over, that people want that finance piece, that learning how to cook for one, um, managing your very small budget and not your parents' budget when you go off to college. So we're going to continue to offer it because I think it'll it'll be a hit. Yep. <laughs> I think all the programming looks good. As you know, I always say this, you've, you've just done a phenomenal job. You came in during COVID and had all kinds of challenges and now moved way beyond that. And I think um, one of the things that is very clear in, in your presentation is that it's responsive to the community. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important because it, it's, so much about um, serving our community. It's obviously serving our students, but as community ed, it reaches the whole community. And I think it speaks volumes that that's exactly, you're you're serving the needs and desires of exactly what people want. So thank you so much for doing yep. that great job. I appreciate that. It's my staff that works really hard at trying to get new things to try. And, and you know, if it doesn't work the first time, we'll just keep trying again. So thank you, Stacey. I appreciate that. Um, I just want to add to that, that I feel like when that, you know, the brochure comes home or in the mail or whatever, um, there's just, there's so many great offerings and it's always evolving. And I love that, um, you know, it maybe hasn't always been that way. And so uh, it's just always a fun surprise of what are some of the new things. And um, we actually have opened that and had conversations about it multiple times. Like we pull it out, we star things, we circle things. Hey, what do you think about this or whatever? So thank you for all the offerings. Thank you. We'll let you all know that we are bringing back food truck Friday and um, we are um, that winter spring brochure will be out. Um, it'll be online the middle of December, but it'll come out right before the holidays. So watch for that. Thank you. I appreciate one, it. One last could you please, could you remind the community how you're funded? That's a great question. Thank you. So we are, we receive a, a certain amount of money. I think it's $5 and 47 cents um, per person that lives within the school district boundaries. So that's our main um, funding stream, but we also have some other levy dollars that we can get. Most of our funding is through parent pay, right? Um, our, you know, MAC parents have to pay for that service. We don't receive any funding for that. Certain programs get some funding. We did just recently um, receive a little bit more funding for our adult, adults with disabilities. We have such a small amount of money in that, that we actually do a consortium again with North St. Paul, South Washington, White Bear Lake. Um, but we are looking at trying to pull some of that back because a lot of our um, 18 to 21 year old students, as well as those that have graduated from that program, um, are not utilizing it. And I don't know if it's because they're 
um, they're not aware of it as much. So we, we really are partnering to try to bring some of those programming um, things back. I know that in February, the end of February, we're going to have a sip and sing along at um, Catherine Abbott Park. So I appreciate the question. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, and now for the report from our student representative, Fatima. So once again, I'm going to start off with what has happened since our last meeting. Wildwood has been doing a lot of arts and craft things. They've had a pumpkin decorating contest. And at OH last week, Friday, they had a movie night. And it was pretty successful because over 300 people showed up. And one core memory I have from elementary school is one of our movie nights. So I think this is a great way to like build community. OH also had a mock election where they got to choose what their spirit day was. And the couple days leading up to that, I remember my sister was so excited about voting and she was so excited about getting to dress up like her teacher. So yeah, and then at the middle school, they are offering the script Spelling Bee. This is, I believe, a new event this year. And it's helpful to increase a variety of opportunities for students to be able to challenge themselves and explore some of their academic interests. And when I saw that they're having the script spelling bee, I thought of the strategic plan and I thought it really aligned well with the strategic plan, discussing building learner agency and providing exceptional learning experiences. At the high school, we've had quite a success with our fall sports. Swim and dive is going to state they had one, I think dive was today, and then the swimming section is tomorrow. Our football team was the section for triple A champion. They were, they were the championships. Ugh, they were the champions of our section. Volleyball also went to state, and there was a field trip for the CIS literature class. And that's a class offered through the U of M. I went on that field trip and I loved it. I got to listen to a poetry reading by the current U.S. Poet Laureate, which is pretty cool. And I, a lot of people talked about how they also enjoyed how they could go to the U of M and kind of explore. Since a lot of us are seniors in that class and we're applying there and thinking about where we want to go for college. We also had our blood drive today at the high school we had good turnout a lot of community members showed up and we don't know how much blood we have donated yet but we will know soon some upcoming events is that on december 1st there's the parents night out which is i know a big hit the high schoolers love running this event and i know parents like to have a night out and enjoying themselves so yeah that's what's going on in our district right now different than usual, just right and left, up or down, just right and left. Okay, here we go. All right. So just my overview, um, I'll share some things that are happening around the district. I highlight some recent professional development, give a facility survey update, and just talk about some upcoming events. That's a picture there from O.H. Anderson, um, and I know there's a slide later about Veterans Day. But... <laughs> So this is something new um, that we learned recently. So um, Madminai High School was awarded the College Board AP Scholar Honor Roll of the Gold Award. Um, and I believe when we looked it up, there were 5% um, of eligible districts were um, honored with a gold award for the AP. Um, I look, maybe it was 6%, 5 or 6%. Um, and to earn this award, um, it's based on um, number of students who took at least one AP exam, scored three or more at three out of five, for those who don't, aren't aware, at least one AP exam um, and took five, over five AP, uh, five or more AP exams, and at least one in ninth or 10th grade. Um, so that is, there aren't many school districts that have, um, earns that honor. So we wanted to highlight that. 
We also, a number of you joined joined in at the high school academic awards. And uh, this is something, I think it was the first time we did it was last year in this format. We've tried this a number of different ways to honor our students uh, who earn the academic letter the, the previous year. So these are all students who are sophomores, juniors, and seniors that won, uh, earned a, an academic letter the previous year. And so we have a breakfast and and uh, they can come in and just kind of mingle, get their picture taken, talk to other award winners. It's a nice, it's a nice event. And we get very good feedback on this. So thank you to the high school staff for putting this together. A few more pictures of OHA Veterans Day celebration. So each of our schools did do did do some kind of recognition of veterans. And this one was one that was new, the way OH decided to do it this year was a little new by having um, students choose, or if if students had a connection to a veteran, they could bring them in. So we saw, we saw parents, we saw grandparents, we saw uncles, aunts, we saw neighbors come in and students would um, introduce them. And we also had a, there was a presentation Oh, and I don't know his real name. It's our, it's, they call him Mr. Clean. And he is our, um, he's one of our, the OHA um, lunch supervisors. And I would, I want his name. Yeah, will you? Oh, Brent Skaya. Thank you. Okay. Because they called him Mr. That's his nickname. And he, he appreciates that. So it's okay that I called him that. Anyway, so he was the, he was the speaker and, and did a really nice job. So you just spoke about this field trip here. So um, I will just show you the picture of the field trip that was on the CIS literature class. You may have heard that we have a, we're trying this year, a district-wide Zephyr service project, and you will have read about it hopefully in the e-news. Every, so every year, every school, there's, there are various projects that um, groups or or full school, the full school will, will participate in. And this year we decided to put them all together so that every um, every school has a different focus, but we're all working on something together. And it's for each to collect specific items to be packaged together for families in need in our school district. So um, families who need assistance are able to sign up. And then our um, schools are putting together the things that are needed in order to provide some holiday assistance for families in our community. So I just wanted to highlight some of the things that happen when our students are home and our teachers come in to do some professional development. At, on October 9th and November 6th, we had uh, professional development days for our staff. And so while our students were gone, Wildwood was working on the letters implementation. You know that last year they did a lot of letters training. This year they're working on letters implementation and also working on some um, social emotional learning and engagement with students. So some training there as well. OHA, letters professional development. And you've heard a lot about that. And then our middle school and high school, various staff members delivered sessions on how to support students with organization, note-taking and school success strategies both to support the middle school success and also some things that are being worked on at the high school to support students. I just wanted to put this on here. I know there's been a lot of conversation about facilities. So last time we were together, we went through the facilities committee, talked about um, the facilities task force, what had come out of that. And one of the things we talked about is the fact that there is a facility survey that's going to be coming up. I heard there were some questions about that in the community about when the survey was going to come out and some details about it. So I wanted to make sure we put this out here. Um, this isn't different from what you heard before, but it is going to be administered via phone. So it's not that I, I heard that people were looking for this survey. It's not that's not what this is. This is intended to be a scientific survey, approximately 400 district residents and and it's a representative sample. So that's why we we do it this way so that we really can um, get that representative sample as opposed to just people who are more willing to return a survey. Um, so the phone calls are going to begin the week of November 27th. And I did um, schedule uh, January 3rd for the presentation of that. 
do 400 people have to answer or they have to make 400 calls? They keep calling until they get the 400. Okay. Represent the representative sample. It's mm -hmm. a good question. Um, and so I wanted to make sure I made that clear and um, that that's the plan. And so, but as you know, school board and as district, we're going to continue to examine those facility needs and solutions. We've been talking, we talked last time, we'll talk more about partnerships with cities, government agencies, private businesses. There are a lot of needs as we know, and um, we want to make sure that we are really um, purposeful and thoughtful about the ways that we go about making these facilities updates and looking for partnerships to do that. So I did want to mention that it is not on our agenda today to talk about facilities. So I wanted to make sure I, I um, put those out there. I don't know if that, and I'll even just stop right now to see if there's anything else that any other board members want to make sure we talk about based on conversations you've had um, around facilities so that the community knows what we're talking about. Anything? Um, and just some upcoming events. Again, that service project is happening. We have um, a Many Faces um, Many Faces event coming up in, uh, at St. Andrews on November 28th. It's um, an intentional social interaction and there'll be food as well. So if I see nourish intentional social interaction, but um, I see you nodding a lot. And so this is something through Many Faces um, and Community Ed and Kate is going to walk up to the microphone <laughs> instead of, so right now she's in the back telling me what to say, and it's just faster if you I'm agree. I'm appreciating that you're bringing that up. So thank you. Yes, Many Faces, which is a, a community group. It's a consortium of different entities that are looking to bring um, opportunities for inclusive and belonging um, in our community. And we are partnering with Marnita's Table and St. Andrews to provide a, a Izzy, that intentional social in, interaction. Um, there's an abundance of different ethnic food that will be there. We have lots of volunteers that are going to be there. Um, there's uh, round tables where you're gonna sit with community members, um, hopefully those that you don't know, um, and you can learn different things about their traditions or their cultures or, you know, just everyday things. How many kids do you have? Where do you go to school? How do you like Monomedi schools? You know, um, and we're encouraging everybody to come. It's free. It's from six to nine. You do not have to stay for the whole thing. So if you have um, young ones are welcome to attend also. We're going to have childcare, transportation. If you need that, you can register and um, it should be a fun time. Thanks, Barb, for mentioning that because I forgot to appreciate that have to register for the event or just if you need you can show up um we we do have a registration just so we can kind of plan but we're we're hoping we'll have about 100 150 people but if we have more than that it'll be great so thank you um i just wanted to comment that i've been to a few of the many faces events and they are fantastic um i was actually really bummed because i'm going to be out of town for work that night so when i saw the date published initially i was it's it's a great event if you have not been to any of their events, it, it's fantastic. And so um, it also there, from what I remember, the last event I attended, it was like, there's people not just from Matamina, right? This is Correct. from White Bear and other places. There there were other um, school board members from White Bear when I attended the last one. And so uh, it was a great event. Yes, thank you. So w the consortium consists of different cities. So Matamina, White Bear Lake, Vadness Heights, um, we have Faith Base, we have all the school districts, White Bear, um, Monomedi, 916, Century College, um, St. Andrews is in there, the, the food shelf is in there, there's, there's like 30 different entities. So yes, there could be people mostly around the lake is what we're hoping for. So good. Thank you. Thanks, Barb. I also want to highlight the Tree of Light ceremony. That's a fundraiser for the uh, food shelf. So I'll put in a plug for that. December 4th is the community lunch, which we talked about. And then on the 7th, we are intending to have a coffee and conversation here before the board meeting for those who would like to come in.
Um, and I believe that is all I have. So thank you. Okay, now discussion information items. Board calendar. Does anyone have anything they want to call out? I think a lot of things were just on your list. Anybody? Uh, just note the coffee and conversation was scheduled. I'm having trouble reading mine. Can someone call up a date? Yes. Thank you. And oh, I'm sorry. That's I meant our coffee. I meant our coffee. Our coffee. Our oh, coffee. I'm sorry. That yeah, our is on December seventh. Yeah. Yep. So that's our. Policies. For these policies, I, don't, I haven't had any questions about 514 or 624, but 616 is the one we talked about last time. And um, I've talked about a couple about it with a couple of you since then. So um, recall 616 had listed, uh, the question came around um, the, that there were, um, there was a part that was crossed out and it was the listing, let me just look at what section it is. Give me one second, section four, um, uh, part C, the district curriculum advisory committee and section four, where it listed out the district curriculum advisory committee. And that had been crossed out. And the question was why? And so the reason is, so from MSBA, the reason is what we talked about, we kind of thought this was the reason is that it is referred to in um, policy 603. In policy 603, there is specific language about the district advisory committee. And so the reason for taking it out here is because it's reflected in 603. So what you have is a copy of 603. This is our current policy 603. And you have a section that's highlighted that says the district advisory committee uh, and possible right there. Do you, do you see the highlighted part? Shall reflect the diversity of the district and its school sites include teachers, parents, support staff, students, and other community residents. So that is the one um, that refers to who is on the committee. And then I said to you that it's also um, it's also actually spelled out more in the district um, advisory committee handbook. So this page is straight from the handbook, and this is what's listed out. And the last thing I wanted to remind you is that this is an advisory committee to the board. So if you feel like this makeup is something that you would like to um, alter, that would be the kind of conversation that you would have. Um, and so I am, I'm just bringing all these forward to you because 616, the reason, because that's the one that we're looking at, that one, the reason those are eliminated again is because it's talked about in 603. And keeping it listed there, I don't, is, is not helpful because it's also listed in 603. So I'm recommending we continue on with this. However, if this advisory committee is not in the way that you would like to see it, then that's the conversation I want to make sure we have. Does that make sense? Does that feel like that meets the needs of that question? Because a few of you had it. So does that work? This one exists already on it. Like this is our current. Okay. Okay. And I'm sorry I wasn't prepared to talk to, to walk you through that last time, but now I understand what's going on. So um do you, so and so with that, are we okay uh, moving forward with 616? Yes, I'll say yes. And then if this is something you want to talk about at some point, then we could put that, maybe the board members could put that on an agenda, a future agenda so that we know when we talk about that, okay? Okay, and 514 and 624, I haven't heard anything new about. So this is just our second reading of these policies. The next meeting, then they would be brought for action. for action items. Uh, 
we have a, on the agenda approval of donations and grants for October 2023, totaling $33,572. Do I have a motion? Second. Question. Uh, note that all donations and grants are greatly appreciated. The use of these funds will be to further the mission of the school district and they are used towards the wishes of the donor. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Next, final reading of policies requiring multiple readings. So mm -hmm. this is policy 418 and 419. Yep, and again, I haven't heard anything since the last reading about either of these policies. These were changes that were made due to legislate due for legislative changes in the case. So, mm -hmm. any questions? For, uh, can I get a motion? Okay. Moved. Second. Discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Now for committee reports, AMSD, Director Payne. So AMSD had a meeting on November 3rd, and at that meeting we um, received an update. The audit, financial audit for the organization was clean. We took a first look at the draft legislation platform, and so they'll come back to us in December for approval for the next legislative session. Um, Superintendent Peter olson Skog of West St. Paul, Mendota Heights, Egan School District, and Dr. Katie Pickell from um, College of Education and Human Development at the University of Minnesota came and shared some data information from the annual, is it annual or is it every other year? I think it's every other year, principal survey. Um, and so that was interesting to hear um, the type of work principals are doing, the type of work they wish they were doing, um, a lot of good information and their slides are posted on the AMSD website if you want more information on the principal survey. But they report, um, on some of the experiences they've missed from teacher prep after they've been in the job, they can talk about teacher prep, administrator prep. Um, they talked about high job satisfaction, um, the type of professional development that's most useful to them and, and things like that. Um, but the slides have a lot of detail and it's really worth reading and thinking about principles. On November 9th, AMSD had their policy conference, um, Superintendent Dufferin and um, Tony Pierce from our district were able to attend with me. It was uh, very well attended. It focused on artificial intelligence and personalized learning. A uh, teacher from District 287 came and spoke. I was very impressed with his presentation. Um, we had a student panel responding to the AI work and personalized learning. Um, the teacher has a couple books out, which I've purchased now and will <laughs> start to read. Um, but he was very good at how AI is influencing the work he is doing with students and how that impacts education. And so I was really impressed with it. At first, when we were, the conference was being put together, it's like, not sure how this all fits together, but it does. It was really well done. Um, and then in the afternoon, there were personalized learning breakout sessions and artificial intelligence breakout sessions led by local districts. So it's an opportunity for us all to hear about how local districts were doing some of this work. And we have a lunchtime speaker as well, looking at the, the data we've been gathering around personalized learning in our state. So our next meeting is December 1st. Uh, so MAFE met last on Monday, October 30th, and we started our meeting with a tour of the engineering area at the high school. So we got to hear from our students uh, about the courses they're taking and the things they're creating um, and designing um, in the fab lab and other areas. Um, it was, you know, that's always the best part to hear from the students. So we got, we started off the meeting with that, and that was, um, really a benefit of, you know, some of the things that MAFE has given um, to the high school. From there, we talked about um, some of the events and things that have taken place um, since school has started. And I know this feels like maybe it was a long time ago, but we probably saw MAFE at the homecoming parade. They had a Zephyr get together at Pine Tree Apple Orchard. Um, they did an event called Songs and Sweets on October 29th. And um, pretty much it seems like uh, they're, they're always all over across the district. So as you heard from Mara, um, the fall fun drive um, is well underway. In fact, it 
officially was October 22nd through November 12th. But like they said, they're always open for um, that giving to continue. And um, uh, I will just put a plug in that being a part, uh, kind of a representative from the school board at all of those meetings. Um, it is incredible to hear and see all of the ways that they give to Matamidi schools. And I would hope that um, as a board, we can think about how we could contribute and give back um, to them to be able to help support our, our schools. They were um, at their meeting talking about they wanted 100% participation from their board and they got that. And they said, we really are asking people to, what could you do? How could you stretch? How could you give back to our schools? Again, th whether that's through a one-time donation or whether that's, you know, uh, um, I guess through pay per pay period or however you want to do that. And they also talked about that a lot of people have companies that will match a lot of those uh, donations as well. So um, then next there at that point on October 30th, there's a quick conversation um, sharing about uh, grants. And at that point, already 11 teachers had applied for grants from MAFE. And so we'll probably hear about an update on, on that in the next meeting. And a few upcoming things for MAFE, they have their strategic planning um, that will happen on November 27th in the afternoon. And um, you may have seen recently, maybe in your email inbox, the um, alumni and friends e-news um, landed probably in your email inbox. And I believe at that point, they were talking about that going out to 11,000 people. Um, emails were being sent out to um, people who were Matamidi alum or connections to Matamidi schools. So um, I just actually read that myself last night and I was actually really impressed with a lot of things that were in there. So if you haven't checked that out, check that out. But uh, it was covered really well by Mara. So I think that's about it for me. And uh, now Minnesota School Boards Association. Uh, I did share information. I think last time we discussed um, the upcoming delegate uh, assembly and I, you included in your notes. So um, there are still spots. Thank you for serving, Director Payne. Um, there's still two spots when I last checked with them. So I think if somebody wants to join, they can. The others are from Stillwater in South Washington County. Um, and then also um, Leslie sent out the note. So if you haven't gotten, have returned an email to her about um, the January, uh, uh, event with the big MSBA event, please do that. Um, we usually have a really good um, participation there. And then the regular meetings are still continuing. If you're not getting information about them, please let me or Leslie know and we'll make sure you're on the list. So as a delegate for the assembly, um, it's important to know that the pre-meetings are this week. Um, so the last pre-meeting is Saturday morning because there's one going on right now. And so if you decide to investigate and take advantage of the open seats, you would need to do that very quickly because you'd need to attend the meeting Saturday morning to do the pre-meeting prior to the event that goes Friday night and then good part of Saturday in December. So, yeah. Next, uh, oh, Northeast Metro, 916. Okay. So November 1st was our last meeting. Um, at that meeting, we looked at the world's best workforce as we did in our district. However, um, historically world's best workforce was not done by our intermediate districts in the state because many of the things that are part of that world's best workforce are an interesting fit for an intermediate as you think about the goals that need to be set and things like that. And so the um, administration team in 916 did a very good job finding the best ways to make that world's best workforce fit that context. And so um, it was interesting the way they, they got it to work. Um, we're not sure if it's the best use of time and reporting, at least I guess I'm not convinced. That's why I'm still thinking about that and thinking about if we need to think about it legislatively, but that's a separate piece. We continued our policy work, much like we're doing going through annual policies that need review and things that need to be updated um, because of legislation. And then we approved a snowplow contracts. Um, the important things we do on, on this board because it's a little bit different than our district. We don't have our own maintenance facilities like, like we do, so we don't see a snowplow contract, but we approved the contracts for Cora um, and Carner Blue and um, I the last name of school. Anyway, for the three buildings. So our next meeting is uh, December 6th. Are there any other board reports? 
Um, so curriculum advisory uh, met last on the second, yes, yeah, second of November. And um, that, that group spent some time looking at uh, courses that are currently being offered in the secondary schools. We had some conversations, we broke into groups where we looked at what is being offered at different grade levels and kind of different grade bands and, and looked at, you know, what did we notice? What did we, were any changes we had noticed? And there were a lot of conversations about things like at the middle school, the middle school success and some things, um, some offerings that we haven't had in the past. And one of those that got a lot of conversation and interest um, was um, the personal finance course. Um, and so there was a lot of interest about what's being offered around business. So, and then also uh, American Sign Language um, being a, a new addition as well. And lastly, um, we talked about um, a new course proposal and there was a presentation given about the new course, which is AP Pre-Calc, which would replace our current pre-calculus course. Um, and so this would be an opportunity for some students who maybe don't take an AP class to potentially take that exam at the end of the year um, to receive college level credit for that course. So uh, we looked at the flow chart for math and what that would look like as far as the track for students to take that. Um, and Jen may be able to speak more to that if I'm missing anything, but uh, um, that, that was basically it. And so we're gonna hear about some new course proposals um, at our next meeting, which will be held on December 14th. Not that Jalen, who was at one of the, is at the belonging signage tables tonight, he talked about how much he loves the finance class. Um, so just plug for that. Again, I know it's very popular, but it's, I think we're on the right track with adding more courses in that um, lane. And I don't think that one last thing, I guess, I, I the other thing then in the group I was in, in particular, many of the things that we talked about would have not been possible in our old schedule. It's just the offerings would not have been feasible in the, you know, the way that our day was constructed. And so knowing that the new schedule opened up a lot of opportunities for students. Yeah, real briefly, I had an opportunity to attend the Special Education Advisory Council led by Tony Pierce. Um, a couple of things. One of the things that I just thought was interesting was that roughly about 460 to 470 total kids in our district um, are served by uh, that group, which is roughly about 15 to 16% of our district. Um, and the other thing that was interesting, and it kind of seems like it's been a theme throughout some of the updates we've received tonight, is they were really focused on um, building off of the work that was done for the strategic plan. So in the case of this meeting, um, they were really focused on um, the community engagement and building community trust piece of it. And it was really talking through parents that have had experiences at all levels, ranging from pre-K all the way through high school around um, transitioning both into the district for new families and transitioning from building to building. And what can we do to partner together as a community of school uh, district, I guess, students and parents to support each other and find ways to help people kind of um, understand what those experiences are going to look like. So whether it's a mentor program or something like that, um, it was just really nice to hear from a bunch of passionate families about things that are going well and opportunities that we can do to improve. And I think the biggest thing that I took away from it was like, it wasn't just, um, you know, um, patting each other on the back or, or, you know, criticizing things. It was really people were focused on actionable next steps which is great. So I, I think it was a very useful um, amount of time spent by everyone there. I wanted to highlight the personal finance class because I am taking it and I've learned a lot. And I like how like the setup of the class is, it's very practical. You're doing a lot of stuff with the things you're learning. It's not just like learn it, take a test, but you're actually doing projects and it's helping you understand what your future can look like how to manage your finances. Madam Chair. Um, so first off, I can't wait for my senior to take that personal finance class next semester. But just curi out of curiosity and, and maybe just a quick overview, how, how are new courses, how do they come to be? And where, what's the, where do we get the input as to the, the need for it? 
correct all. What piqued my interest was the pre-calc because on a college visit yesterday, they emphasized for students entering, you know, for a business major, they wanted pre-calc. Yeah, so typically the courses come through a teacher interest, but we have had things where there's been community interest. And I'll use DECA as an example. We had strong community interest that came in through administration. And then really Justin and Carrie tapped some shoulders and said, we need to do something in business. And that's how Annie Dahl became part of it. And then she comes, she will actually be coming in December to propose another I think two courses um, in the business realm. And typically it is as uh, some of our teachers are surveying students to find out what are we missing? Like, what are you most interested in learning more about? Sometimes in the case of AP Pre-Calc, it is a brand new course from the College Board this year. And we wanted to give it a year to sort of work out the kinks. Um, and our math department recognized that for some students, pre-calc is um, maybe the last course in their math sequence. And for some of those kids, they haven't um, pursued an AP course before. And so this will be a really great opportunity to invite new students into advanced placement. Um, and Kelly did a great job. The cool thing that we learned is that the course is pretty much identical. They can use the same resources that they are now. They just get to use the AP moniker on it, and um, students will know that they have a readiness to take the exam at the end of the year should they choose. Thank you. That's helpful. Yep. Great. Any other reports? Okay. So next, we need to go into close meeting. So this is when I'll thank everyone for being here. Um, we will open back up, but we won't. We'll just adjourn at that point. So I need a motion to close the meeting according to it. This is for discussion of labor negotiation strategies and developments in pursuant to Minnesota statute 13D.03. Moved. Moved by Director Doman. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 